Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Bookspin. Today we're going to look at the character of the mad scientist, which is one of my favourite archetypes in fiction. A number of my favourite classics in science fiction and horror feature mad scientists in important roles. And these are characters that are highly intelligent and educated and ambitious, but they're typically also very hubristic and devoid of ethical boundaries, and they engage in dangerous and terrifying experiments that often result in tragic consequences. And as such, they often take on the role of antagonists, though this is not always the case. So to explore this trope in more detail, I've put together this list, my top 10 mad scientists in science fiction. First up we have Virgil Ulam from Blood Music by Greg Bear. Virgil Ulam is a talented renegade scientist and a bit of a oddball genius. His object of research is a type of nucleoprotein that has been engineered to act as a tiny computer that can change the structure of human blood cells. So it's a form of artificial intelligence that combines biology and machine at the cellular level. So he goes behind the back of the biotech firm that he works for in, in carrying out this research. But they find out and they totally don't approve of this and so he gets fired. But he believes that this work is too important to be sacrificed. So what does he do? He injects himself with these AI cells so he can carry on his experiment in private. And then these cells start to do some pretty amazing things to his body. Um, it starts off quite positive. They make improvements to his eyesight and his posture. But it's not long before they start modifying him in more radical and shocking ways, and things start to get out of hand. I think this is a fantastic sci-fi horror story and it falls within the mad scientist tradition of Frankenstein. Like Victor Frankenstein, Virgil uses science to create a new form of life the like of which the world has never seen but he uses his own body as the test subject with profound and devastating consequences. So I read this story in the original form in which it was published as a short story in this collection, Tangents, but it was later expanded into a full novel. Next up, André de Lambre from The Fly by George Langelan. André de Lambre is a brilliant research scientist who has made an astounding discovery that allows him to transmit matter via a process that he calls disintegration reintegration. So he sets up a converted telephone box in his home laboratory. This is his transmitter device. And this connects to a receiver pod in another room. It's basically a teleportation technology, but it's a work in progress. So he wants to keep this research secret from the world until he can get it working flawlessly. But when he recklessly conducts the first human test on the transmitter and teleports through the machine himself, he gets a very unexpected result, which is truly horrific and terrifying. This is a classic short story. It masterfully combines science fiction and horror and murder mystery it's also pretty gut-wrenching. It's been anthologized many times. I read it in this collection, Real Terror, edited by Sebastian Wolf. I suspect a lot of people will be familiar with the 1980s film, which was a very loose adaptation and not particularly faithful to the original story. The movie really goes to town with the transformative body horror. But I found... 
reading the original story a lot more emotionally powerful. Uh, while Andre clearly qualifies as a mad scientist, he is far more of a sympathetic character in the short story than in the film, I believe. It's definitely worth a read. Next, Professor Priyapazhensky from The Heart of a Dog by Mikhail Bugakov. Professor Priyapazhensky is a respected surgeon, an eccentric intellectual, who adopts a stray dog that he finds in the street near his home in Moscow. And while appearing to take pity on the animal, whom he names Sherik, it soon becomes clear that he has more sinister plans for him. As part of a bizarre rejuvenation experiment, he performs an operation on the dog that involves implanting a human pituitary gland and human testes from a recently deceased man. But not only does the dog survive this experience, but it actually has the effect of uplifting him to the point where he transforms into an intelligent humanoid being. Despite this, however, he remains driven by primitive animal instincts and his personality takes a dramatic turn for the worse. So we have a new human canine being uh, that is in fact extremely loutish and unkempt and simple-minded. And the consequences of Priyoprzhensky's experiment are both tragic and hilarious. He tries to civilize Sharik, but all of his efforts are in vain, and Sharik proceeds to make the professor's life a living hell. Uh, so this is um, an absurdist Russian novella, and it's another modern day Frankenstein with the uh, dark satirical undertones. It was in fact banned in the Soviet Union for many decades because it was seen as too subversive, and it didn't get published until the 1980s. And yeah, it's pretty obvious if you read it, it's a sort of allegorical satire on the communist revolution. Professor Priyapazhensky's experiment and its disastrous consequences have definite analogues in the ugly face of the early Soviet regime. Next up, Dr. Jekyll from The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. In this classic gothic novella, Dr. Jekyll is a mild-mannered and well-respected experimental scientist, a classic Victorian gentleman. At the same time, he's also a psychologically repressed character who needs an outlet for the darker side of his nature. To this end, his research into the boundaries of consciousness leads him to develop a chemical concoction of what he calls transcendental medicine, which he consumes with the goal of compartmentalizing the evil side of his nature and thus curbing it. However, the experiment goes horribly wrong, and he's transformed into a monstrous alter ego, Mr. Hyde, a hideous being that is the personification of evil. Through repeated transformations, Mr. Hyde wreaks havoc and violence upon the world. Uh, when Dr. Jekyll returns to his original form, he tries to gain control over his experiment and resist uh, reverting to his evil self. But he finds the Hyde persona increasingly difficult to contain. The unlimited power that the potion offers is too much for him to handle. And in classic mad scientist tradition, it ends up destroying him. So this story is an intriguing Victorian fantasy into split personality and a deeply unsettling slice 
of psychological horror. And next we have Dr. Moreau from The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. A classic of science fiction horror. Dr. Moreau is a particularly sinister character. He's a vivisectionist from London who achieves notoriety in the scientific world for his gruesome and unethical experiments. After his crimes are exposed, he fled to a remote uncharted island in the Pacific where he spends his remaining days in exile, continuing his horrifying research on animal subjects. In doing so, he creates a bizarre and grotesque array of pitiful beings that appear to be something like human-animal hybrids, using such species as ape, puma, and sloth. He calls these creatures the beast folk. It's basically some sort of experiment and uplift. How exactly he does this is not entirely clear to me. A lot is left to the reader's imagination. But what he really wants is to successfully transform an animal into a complete human. That's his ultimate goal, but he hasn't achieved it yet. But Dr. Moreau is obsessive about this goal, and he insists that all of the pain and the cruelty that he inflicts on these beings through his vivisection are a necessary and worthwhile side effect in his grand and noble ambition. So this is a visionary and disturbing tale about the potential dangers of scientific power when put in the hands of a madman, freed from all of the restraints of society. Next up, Professor Kern from Professor Dahl's Head by Alexander Belyaev. Professor Kern is a particularly unscrupulous and unethical surgeon who has a single-minded ambition of achieving fame and fortune in the scientific world. He will stop at nothing to further his career through lies, manipulation, and murder even. The research he's working on involves particularly cruel and twisted experiments in life support. So he's a bit of a psychopath, really. He kills his colleague, Professor Dahl, decapitates him, and continuing Dahl's own research, manages to revive the head, keeping it alive in his lab, disembodied. He has high hopes for this project, and secretly carries out more research into the remarkable possibilities of this procedure. He hopes to display the head in an upcoming exhibition that will make him the envy of the scientific world. This is a very entertaining story. It's a classic piece of Russian sci-fi horror with overtones of social commentary. And like blood music, uh, this story started off in short story form before later being expanded into a novel. I read the original novelette in this anthology, Red Star Tales, edited by Yvonne Howell. It's arguably the best story in this volume, and I'd definitely be interested in reading the full novel at some point. Next, Dr. Trentignon from Diamond Dogs by Alistair Reynolds. Dr. Trentignon is an experimental cyberneticist from the planet Yellowstone of the Revelation Space Universe. He specializes in replacing and augmenting human body parts using mechanical elements. In fact, this is not just his specialty, it's his obsession. While Cyborg bodily modifications are a common feature of Chasm City, the society where he's from. 
He takes this practice to a perverse extreme, operating on both himself and those who seek his services. But more disturbing still, allegedly, the subjects he operates on are not always consenting. And he plays an important role in Diamond Dogs, which is an excellent sci-fi horror novella that you can find in this collection, Diamond Dogs Turquoise Days. And in this story, he is recruited as part of a small team of specialists who are sent to an alien planet to investigate an enigmatic and ominous structure known as the Blood Spire. Uh, so this is a tower that's filled with a series of rooms and in order to get from one room to the next and go up the tower you have to solve a mathematical puzzle to open the door. Uh, and, and these puzzles become increasingly difficult with each room with potentially violent and horrific consequences if you make a mistake. So, Dr. Trintinon's advanced medical services turn out to be particularly useful in overcoming this ordeal, ranging from advanced prosthetic surgery to radical neural restructuring to artificially increase one's mathematical ability and accelerate consciousness to a superhuman level. So, as the group get increasingly obsessive and desperate in their goal, the doctor experiments with more and more radical bodily modifications. It's, uh, it's a very outlandish story, it's quite disturbing, and it's a very entertaining read. The next one is Dr. Harbour from The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is an interesting one. Dr. Harbour is a psychiatrist and sleep researcher, not what you might consider a traditional mad scientist career. However, he is certainly very ambitious. He receives a patient, George Orr, who is suffering from a bizarre sleep condition in which his dreams have the power to change reality literally so whenever he has one of these dreams he wakes up to find the world changed in some profound way reflecting what has happened in the dream so it's an enormous power with huge potential but george really resents these dreams he he sees them as a curse that he wants nothing to do with all he wants is to live a normal life. So he turns to Dr. Harbour uh, for therapy that he hopes will cure himself of this affliction. But instead, Dr. Harbour sees a unique opportunity in these dreams, a chance of power and fame, and to change the world for the better. So instead of curing his patient, he manipulates him, and uses him for his own ends, using the powers of hypnotic suggestion to induce him to have the kind of dreams that Dr. Harbour wants, and thus enable his agenda in the real world. So, it's a classic case of an abuse of power and control. But the interesting thing is, Dr. Harbour's motives aren't purely selfish. He actually has some pretty grand altruistic and utopian goals and believes he can use George's dreams to rid the world of social ills such as war and overpopulation and racism. So if the end result makes the world a better place perhaps it's not such a bad thing. Well the thing is the dreams never quite come out the way the doctor intends to and they frequently end up with quite unexpected and terrifying results. You have to read the novel to find out. I definitely recommend this 
It's a really fascinating and thought-provoking read, and one of Le Guin's finest. Next up is Griffin from The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. So it's another Wells classic. Griffin is a brilliant optical physicist whose research into optical density and manipulating the human body's refractive index leads to a groundbreaking discovery that has the effect of making his own body invisible. This is, however, a particularly ominous discovery, as Griffin is one man least to be trusted with such a power. He's a mentally unstable recluse with excessive arrogance and a thirst for power, and like Dr. Jekyll before him, his experiment brings out the very darkest of his qualities. It's not long before he finds himself unable to reverse his invisibility. So, enraged, he locks himself away in a village inn, withdrawing further from society and descending into madness. When he goes out into public, he hides his invisibility by wrapping his face in bandages and wearing dark goggles, thus adding to his untrustworthy demeanour. This particular appearance along with his extremely rude and irritable manner, makes him an object of town gossip and not very popular with the locals. As you might expect, things quickly escalate from bad to worse, and as his resentment to society grows, so does his lust for power. And he starts to use his power for nefarious purposes, wreaking havoc in the community by performing chaotic and violent crimes. His invisibility, the ultimate disguise to avoid capture by the authorities. The Invisible Man is a classic study in the hubris of science and the dangers that scientific progress can bring when divorced from ethics and humanity. And at number one, Victor Frankenstein from Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. So as the mad scientist prototype, I think it's only right that Victor Frankenstein should be at the top of this list. He may not be as crazy or as evil as some of the other characters that are mentioned, but he personifies the key characteristics of the mad scientist archetype and has been capturing the imagination of readers for over 200 years. As an ambitious and visionary university student, Frankenstein is obsessed with the grandiose goal of discovering the secret of life. When his mother dies of scarlet fever, his grief spurs him on even more, and he buries himself in his experiments. Eventually, he makes a crucial breakthrough and finds a way of imparting life to inanimate matter. At last, he achieves his greatest ambition and succeeds in creating an intelligent living being. But when the creature stirs, he realizes that he's actually created something hideous, a monster. So he shuns his creation and abandons him. And there's, there's a great tragedy, I think, in Frankenstein's character. He's clearly a very gifted and intelligent scientist, and he, and he starts off as a bit of a sympathetic character. He could potentially do something good for the world with his vision, but instead he uses science as a massive power trip, heedless of the consequences, and completely loses sight of his humanity in the process. When his experiment goes wrong, he abdicates responsibility, with tragic and disastrous consequences for both his creation and Frankenstein himself, alongside all that he holds dear. 
And that completes my list. Although I'm sure there are plenty of other great mad scientist stories out there. There's a few which I almost included in this list but didn't quite make it. Uh, and I'm sure there are plenty which I'm not aware of. So please feel free to share your recommendations in the comments. And in the meantime, if you're interested in some further reading, there's an anthology on this theme which I've discovered uh, called Promethean Horrors, Classic Tales of Mad Science, edited by Xavier Aldana Rees. So I don't currently own this book, but I've had a look at the contents. And it's definitely got some classics in there. Uh, it's got The Fly, which I've talked about. Um, the Mortal Immortal by Mary Shelley, which I've discussed uh, before in this channel. Uh, Rappuccini's Daughter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, which I've heard is good. Uh, but there are also some stories from some well-known names like Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft. So well worth checking out, I expect. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.